Hi, this is Carrie Mubarak at wooingnature.life and this is the new moon view for the earth signs. If you want to get a general view of the aspects of the moon that are coming in on January 5th, the general overview of what the moon is kind of doing for all of us, you can take a look at the new moon view. Um, but this is specifically for the earth sign so we're looking at um, the new moon energy what's coming in during that period of time and then how that affects my earth signs um, those are people who are in the sign of uh, virgo taurus or capricorn or people with a lot of um, earth in their chart so if you're familiar with your own chart and you know that you're heavy on the earth side then you also probably want to pay attention to this reading as well. So in general, the new moon is coming in with a lot of Capricorn energy. We have Mercury in Capricorn. We have the sun conjuncting moon, the moon in Capricorn, Saturn's in Capricorn, Pluto's in Capricorn. So lots of um, get it done, get down to business, focus on your personal success energy is happening for all of us. Um, and more specifically with our earth signs, because earth signs are always focused on, focus on what's happening in their practical, pragmatic lives. What's happening at work, what's happening with my money, what's going on with my family um, and those people that are around me. That's, that's um, typically what earth signs are focused on. So this is a time for completion for my earth sign people. This is definitely a time for completion. Um, so you all are completing things that you started probably years ago. So if you find that you're kind of at the end of the, if you feel like you're at the end of a journey, it's because you are. Um, so the new moon time is really, really a period of self-reflection for you, but specifically for the earth signs, you're going to go a little lower. This is at the center of your, um, that's at the center or at the core of the earth signs right now is the lower world, which means that you're going to go dig a little deeper. We're all digging deeper during the new moon, but you're going to delve a little deeper during this period of time because it is a time of, of self-reflection and also reflection on your journey. You guys have the journey card. So when you're looking at the journey that you have been taking, you, this is the time for you to really make a full assessment of that, both the positives and the negatives, but more specifically what you learned during this process. Um, because uh, with earth signs, earth signs tend to focus on the goal. They have a tendency to say, okay, I have this goal and this is what I want to see happen and happening. And especially with Capricorn being such an influence, then uh, your focus is on the goal. Like what is, what is it that I want to see happen or what is it that I wanted to see happen? And is it actually happening? Has it actually happened? This time for you is not about the goal. You're already at completion. So you don't have to focus on the goal right now. This time is for you to look back on the process and the path toward the goal and look at it for what it is and look at what you're taking away from it, what you learned from it. Um, you want to take that time right now to say, well, how far have I come? What lessons have I learned what spiritual lessons I've learned, what social lessons I've learned, what practical skills have I gained over this period of time. This has been a path of heart for you, not about the head. It may have seemed like it was, but it really is about getting to your heart center and knowing that what your heart is driving you toward. No doubt in 2018, you got a chance to see the stuff that wasn't working. Um, and if it wasn't working, it's because it did not coincide with your spirit path or it did not coincide with what your heart was leading you to do. And right now we are all focused on um, the path of heart. The next thing that um, the next card or next focus for you is the staff. The staff represents what you walk with. So if the journey is your walk then the staff is what you're walking with, what you came with, what um, things that your parents, 
and your upbringing, your ancestry add to that, and then plus your own experiences. So as we're walking down the path of life, our staff represents who we are. It represents what we've learned, what we've gained, who we have, uh, who, how we have evolved over the course of time, and then what these lessons have given us. In the North position, and I guess I should have explained the, the, um, reading itself. This is a medicine wheel reading. It's a five card reading. We have a center focus and then we have four cards that come around us in all four directions, the north, the south, the east, and the west. So this is in your north position, which is the child. Um, the north usually represents our wisdom place and the place uh, where we where we can access the wisdom that we have gained over the time that we have been on planet earth. And in that position, you have the child, which is, there's a real sense of wonder that comes with that. Usually when you think about a child, you think about someone who doesn't know, but children have a knowing that adults don't have because they're not judging and they're not, um, um, making, they don't have enough experience to then apply what's happening to something they've already learned so they can look at life with a sense of wonder. And so in your wisdom place, earth signs, um, there's a return. Again, you are in a position of completion. This is in your East. So you're already completing lessons. And so now you can take those lessons and, and then open yourself up to um, seeing life anew. So this is really, really um, great. So I'm gonna delve a little deeper into each one of these cards for you and I'll try to make it as quick as possible. Um, but I'm gonna delve into each one of these. Um, first of all, at the center is the lower world. So the new moon is asking you to delve a little deeper. Um, the Plutonian aspects to the moon are in focus. Um, some of those focus areas are the unnecessary conflicts that you may have with family, um, particularly those stubborn conflicts. If you have family members that are women or if they identify as women, then those are the people that may give you insight or those might be the people that you have the conflicts with. So two, that is one area of focus um, for the new moon as far as digging deeper. Look at your family history, your family cycles, patterns. Um, that um, either your mothers, your sisters, people that are women in particular, but not, you know, it's not, um, it's not relegated to women. It's, it's just looking at patterns, family patterns, family history, cycles of certain kinds of things that, that, um, that you've been growing from and that you've been evolving through, if you will. Um, and then also the things that you may hide from them because of judgment. So when we say dig, use this time, it is a time of completion for earth signs. You are coming to the end of some journeys, um, either uh, it could be personally or it could be professionally. You're coming to the end of these journeys, but this time of the new moon wants you to kind of really, really look at what happened along the way, because when you take the time to do that, then when you go into your new energy or as you're completing this and you start to um, to call in the new, then you can recall those experiences and use that information to then um, help you navigate the new uh, as well. So look at your history, your ancestry, and how you and your journey is the evolution of that, how what it is that they experience has influenced you, and then how you are going to influence uh, the other people or influence the change that happens as a result of um, looking at these patterns and noticing how they have either helped or harmed you or where you know what you've learned as a result of it. So. The Plutonian aspects, is a, there is a conjunct between Pluto and the moon, and there's also a conjunct between Pluto and the sun, which I'll get to in just a second. But the aspect of Pluto to the moon is saying, hey, look at your family, look at your ancestry, look at where you came from, make that be a part of this assessment. Don't exclude it. 
All right. So the Pluto aspect to the sun, again, there is a sun moon conjunct. So the sun and the moon are conjun conjuncting each other. There is also, I'll let you know, a um, there's a partial eclipse on the new moon as well. So the moon and the sun are, are right there together energetically. And so this aspect is asking you to do some spiritual analysis analysis, almost like a, a psycho spiritual analysis. So go in, delve deep, think about that ancestry, think about the patterns that you're correcting, think about the patterns that you um, have accepted and whether or not um, what, what that has done, but also give yourself a uh, look at it from a spiritual aspect too, because these are not just things that were happening to you for no reason. You know, whatever goals you had for yourself, you were setting those goals, maybe for very practical reasons, but they're also spiritual, um, spiritual implications that go along with your practical decisions. You are a spirit person having a physical experience. Um, so anything that you're doing, anything that you feel driven toward, anything that's been drawing you, um, particularly in areas of focus or, you know, feeling your own sense of power, that's all a part of your spiritual upliftment and a part of your spiritual growth as, as well. Um, you want to look at places where you conceal your power. Some people are not comfortable with their own personal power. They're not comfortable being powerful. And at times when we don't feel comfortable with that or we feel insecure about our own power places, we have a tendency to conceal those. And when you conceal them, then sometimes what happens is then you become you use them to manipulate. So you're not, um, you're not forthcoming with your power. You're not comfortable with your power. So you can't walk in your power and confidence and honesty and forth, you know, and being forthright with it. So what you do is you conceal the power. Sometimes you have to conceal your power. Sometimes you have to keep that hidden, but then if you're keeping it hidden because you're afraid that your family is going to judge you or your friends are going to judge you or society is going to judge you, then a lot of times we'll take that power and we'll use it as a form of manipulation. So you want to look at uh, your power places, where you feel powerful and then where that comes from. And then also when we talked about ancestry and your family, um, family dynamics, Sometimes power plays and power experiences and our sense of power um, is hereditary. It comes uh, as a part of the group that we were born into. So don't um, don't exclude that at all. Look, take a look at that at all. At, take a look at that as well. And then um, Pluto to the sun, Pluto sun conjunct aspects. Also look at our ideas of success what it is that makes us feel successful deep inside um, and our views of success. So whatever your perception of success is versus what is actually success for you, Pluto is going to dig that out. Pluto being in Capricorn and Pluto influencing this moon is going to, is going to have you um, really, really be honest about who, you are what is true success for you. It's going to look at you and say, oh, okay, well, you got this idea about what's successful, but that's really not associated with who you are on the inside. That's not a part of your, um, your path of heart. So there are things that you, there, there are perceptions of success, wealth, and succeeding, and then there's actual success, wealth, and um, the feeling of being empowered inside inside from an internal perspective all right so i already had my hand on this card the journey um also i want to bring up the pluto conjunct to sun the focus is on success your ambitions the situations and circles that make you feel your personal power what you learned along the way um, that benefited you either emotionally or um, what uh, actual practical skills that you gain from the journey, what you have learned spiritually, how you have matured mentally um, or how it's affected you um, in general, uh, what the process has taught you. So as you're looking at this thing that you're completing, what has the process taught you? What have you gained from the experience? And then how has the journey healed you emotionally? 
Um, how have you grown? What are the mental strengths that you've gained? Um, what spiritual advances have you made? And then what are your practical skills? Again, this is a balanced view, a balanced perspective. Um, this card, the staff, again, delving a little deeper into the staff. The staff is what you walk with. So if we're talking about the journey, which is your walk, the staff represents that walk. The staff is uh, decorated, so so to speak, with aspects of the journey. If you see people with walking sticks, personal walking sticks, the things that are on the stick represent who they are in some kind of way. The staff also um, is what you stand for and what holds you up when you feel like you're going to fall. Okay, uh, What keeps you going and uh, as well as what what things you've gained along the way. So you've got that in two places, looking at the journey very deeply and seeing what's been gained, what you've learned. Um, it's not just looking at the hard parts. It's also looking at the joys as well. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so that's, that's something to think about. In the North, the child is like a return to innocence. It's the ability to look at your life from a new perspective. That's what happens when you reach completion, when you come to an end of a journey. You are able to assess what happened, and then you're able to approach the new with the wonder and the um, curiosity of a child. You're able to be honest or, or be honest about what it is you're seeing and feeling or approaching things with a sense of honesty. That's a moon conjunct Saturn aspect as well because we've got moon conjuncting Saturn and that energy brings about a sense of honesty. And um, there's also a another aspect of the sun being in Capricorn, being sextiling the um, Neptune. And when that happens, there's this sense of wonder. So all of this, having the wonder of the child going into your new life with, um, with an open mind, with an open heart, with an open spirit, so that whatever it is that comes, you can just absorb it like, like a sponge. And that's what children are like. They're like sponges. And then of course, completion is finishing what you started, um, feeling renewed, and feeling a sense of success and accomplishment because you have completed this. And so um, it's, it's a sense of coming full circle. So I've pulled um, a few clarifying cards out of the um, Enchanted Map deck, Oracle deck. And then also I've also pulled a few tarot cards in relationship to this. So I will share those with you um, from that uh, reading, we get the balancing act. So we got balance, solitude, peaks of joy, the wizard of awareness in the north position, and then the gentle gardener in the east. So I'll share with you a little bit about that. Um, in the center where you had the lower world, that's where you're digging deep and you're, um, and you're, you're digging deep within going to some deeper places in your own psyche in relationship to what you have completed um, over this period of time. It's creating a balance, okay? This is about balance and balancing out everything. Yes, you all are getting ready to reap what you have sown and you're getting ready to see something new and exciting. You're on the precipice of change and all of that, but that requires some balance and you don't want to enter into that phase out of balance. You want to enter into that phase with the sense of balance. So this period of time in the new moon where you're doing this self-reflecting, really it's not, it's, it's self-reflection, but it's really reflection over the process and the journey is there to kind of balance out what's coming in because there's going to be a lot of new energy for you um earth sign folks so this is a solitude so during the new moon and the new moon period kind of starts two days before two days after so use that time to kind of have some me time um because you're going to need it for this analysis in the west which is where we had the staff the staff is about what you're walking with. You got peaks of joy. So to me, what that's telling me is don't just, when you're making this um, assessment, when you're looking back over your experiences, when you're looking back into your ancestral influences or your parental influences or your family influences, don't forget to take a note of the joyous times. It's not all bad. So look at the, look at the conflicts. Don't be afraid of the conflicts. 
don't be afraid of the, that those stubborn places where it just looked like you all could not get along or what have you. Also look at what was joyous about that time because that in itself is also acts as a balancing um, tool. Sometimes um, I'm working with people and they have like very, very difficult childhoods and we don't want to negate the difficulties, but I always try to remind them, say, what, what joys did you have from that period of time? Because then we can really get a truly balanced outlook. And then in the North, which is our wisdom place, we get the wizard of awareness. So the wizard is, um, is considered to be a wise person. Somebody who knows awareness is aware of everything around us. And that is in the position where we have the child. So this awareness that we're talking about is not just like this wise owl sense, but it's the sense of awareness that comes from being able to be clear about what has happened, being able to forgive, being able to let go um, or to accept what it is that you learned and gained from your process and then being able to look at things from a totally new perspective. Um, so this wisdom is the wisdom that comes from just being aware, being um, present in the moment. Um, and then with the completion card, which was in the East, we have the gentle gardener. The gentle gardener means that you have done your work. You have taken your time. You have been patient. Earth signs are nothing if they're not patient. And so they, uh, this tells me that you have tended your garden. You've planted your seeds. You've watched them grow. You've done the watering. You've done the pruning. You've done the fertilizing. You've watched the process. You know, you've waited for the rain to come. You had to wait and for the sun to, you know, add what it adds to your mix. And so you have been the gentle gardener, you have been the patient gardener, and now you can see these things come into completion. So um, I also did for you all, because um, the cards are asking you to go a little deeper, they said for the earth signs, earth signs have to dig a little deeper. So I went a little deeper too, and I pulled out another, um, um, set of cards. These are tarot just to give you another layer if you need it. We got the Knight of Cups in reverse, which means that there's been some sort of, um, there's been some, some learning and evolution happening for you in relationship to the heart. Again, we talked about the journey being a path of heart, not what you think, not what somebody else is telling you, but what your heart is leading you because your heart is leading you whether you want to believe it or not. Your heart is always leaving, leading, leading us. That's why we go and we get into things like, oh, why didn't this go right? Because it's not your path of heart. It's your heart is connected to your true self, to your spirit self. And so if you're doing things that are counterproductive to your spiritual evolution and growth, they're not going to work for you. So this um, period of time has been been that it's about maturing it's about learning it's about discovery self-discovery but particularly about um where where your that which you love or your heart and that guiding you and then also um your intuition as well we got the ten of cups ten of cups is like when you have everything you want and more okay it is also um a sign of completion, but completion as far as our emotional work, what emotional work we're having done or that we're doing. Okay. So again, like I said, even if, even if your goals have been very practical, know that behind it has been something spiritual that's been going on for you. This is also about our ideals and what we perceive as having it all. Okay, so that goes back to the success thing. Four of Swords is about resting and recuperating. We already said this is a time of renewal. We are in a earth renewal moon. So when the earth is renewing itself and taking a break to renew itself, we got to take a break to renew ourselves, especially if we're earth signs. Um, so this time out is to rest and recuperate. Again, we got that in um, the... Um, enchanted map with solitude, taking this time for yourself, 
to balance out and to also see everything as you need to see it. Then in the north, we got the five of pentacles. So these lessons to me are about perceptions of wealth and poverty. It's about a perception of what is what is successful, what makes you wealthy, what truly makes you wealthy, um, what you're what you think about wealth and what you think about success and then what wealth and success actually mean for you personally. And then we got the Ace of Pentacles, which is the conclusion in that same place where we have completion. And we have the Gentle Gardener. We also have the Ace of Pentacles. And so to me, this is fruit. This is definitely about reaching some um, conclusions about what uh, what our needs and wants and desires and the things that we have uh, that we want to see in our physical, practical lives, what that really is and coming to the truth of that. So great time, earth signs. You guys have done your work. You all have put it in. You've put the time in. It's really, really powerful. So this new moon is really for you to just reflect and get ready for the wonderful things that are coming to you um, at this time. So love you to death. I hope you guys are having a happy new year. I hope this new moon brings with it the right energies for you to do what you need to do. Just remember that these, uh, these, these energies are out there for you to utilize. Um, if you relate to it, if it connects with you, then use that energy to um, get done what it is that you want to get done in your life. That's what Capricorn energy is about. That's what the new moon energy is all about. And, um, you know, I'm really proud of you all for the work that you've put in and what you've done. If you would like to go a little deeper, we I can give you your personal perspective. We'll look at your personal astrology chart. If you know your time and birth and birth location, birth time and birth date, of course, then we can look a little deeper for you and get very specific. But this is basically for all of our earth signs. That's Taurus, that's Virgo, and that's Capricorn or anybody that has a lot of earth signs in their chart. You can go by this. But if you want to get more specific, I can give you a personal perspective. Reach out to me at Carrie, K-E-R-R-I, at wooingnature.life. As always, I wish you a fabulous day. I hope you have a great new year and a wonderful life.